Welcome to a review lesson on multiplication and division of fractions. Before we follow our steps above though, let's look at example A and solve it using this model here. Two-thirds times three-fourths means you want two-thirds of three-fourths or two-thirds of a copy of three-fourths. Notice how here's a model for three-fourths. We want two-thirds of this. So let's divide this into thirds horizontally in this direction. So notice that two-thirds of three-fourths would be this amount here. So notice how two-thirds of three-fourths is equal to six-twelfths. But this does simplify. There's a common factor of six here. Six-twelfths simplifies to one-half. But now let's find this product using the steps above. Step one again is to write mixed numbers and whole numbers as improper fractions, which doesn't apply here. So following these steps directly, if we have two-thirds times three-fourths, our directions say we multiply straight across, meaning multiply the numerators, then multiply the denominators, and then step three is to simplify. So two times three is equal to six, and three times four is equal to twelve, we know six twelve simplifies to one half. So while these steps always work, typically it is common to simplify before multiplying. So let's back up and do this again. To simplify before multiplying, we simplify out any common factors between any numerator and any denominator. Notice here we have a common factor of three. There's one three and three here, and one three and three here. So these both simplify to one, and notice two and four share a common factor of two. There's one, two, and two, and two twos and four. And now we can multiply, and our product will already be simplified. So one times one is equal to one, and one times two is equal to two. Looking at the next example, notice how we don't have any mixed numbers or whole numbers. So we could just multiply the numerators and denominators and then simplify. But again, let's simplify first. Notice how twelve and forty-eight have a common factor of twelve, where there's one twelve and twelve, and four twelves and forty-eight. And notice twenty-five and thirty-five share a common factor of five, where there's five fives and twenty-five, and seven fives and thirty-five. Now we can go ahead and multiply, and our product will already be simplified. So the numerator is going to be one times seven or seven, and the denominator is going to be five times four, which is equal to twenty. Seven twentieths does not simplify, because the only common factor between seven and twenty is equal to one. Next we have seven eighths times five, which we'll write as seven eighths times five over one. There are no common factors between any numerator and any denominator, so we multiply the numerators and multiply the denominators. So seven times five is equal to thirty-five, and eight times one is equal to eight. Notice here we do have an improper fraction, Let's also find this product as a mixed number. So we'd have thirty-five divided by eight, and there are four eighths in thirty-five. Four times eight is equal to thirty-two. We subtract, and notice how we have a remainder of three, which means thirty-five eighths is equal to four and three eighths. Again, we have the quotient, and then we have the remainder over the divisor, which is also the original denominator. And then finally for D, we first rewrite the mixed numbers as improper fractions. So for three and one fifth, we'd have a denominator of five. The numerator is going to be five times three plus one, that's sixteen. And then for one and one ninth, we have a denominator of nine, and the numerator is nine times one plus one, which equals ten. Now again, before multiplying, let's go ahead and simplify. Notice five and ten share a common factor of five. There's one five and five and two fives and ten. And there are no common factors between sixteen and nine. So now we'll multiply the numerators and multiply the denominators. Sixteen times two equals thirty-two. And one times nine equals nine. Again, this fraction does not simplify, but it is an improper fraction. Let's also find the product as a mixed number. So we'd have thirty-two divided by nine. There are three nines in thirty-two. Three times nine equals twenty-seven. Subtract, 
and we have a remainder of five, which means 32 ninths is equal to three and five ninths. And now let's look at two examples of dividing fractions. Again, step one is to write the mixed numbers and whole numbers as improper fractions, which doesn't apply in our first example. Now step two, it says change the second fraction to its reciprocal, and then three we multiply. So instead of dividing by three-fifths, we're going to multiply by the reciprocal of five-thirds. So one-half divided by three-fifths is equivalent to one-half times the reciprocal of five-thirds. And now we follow the rules for multiplying. Notice we have no common factors between the numerators and denominators, so we multiply the numerators and multiply the denominators. One times five equals five, and two times six is equal to six. The division problem, one-half divided by three-fifths, is asking us how many three-fifths are there in one-half. And because our quotient is five-six, there are five-six three-fifths in one-half. Next, we have eight divided by four-fifths. We'll first write eight as an improper fraction, which would be eight over one. And then instead of dividing by four-fifths, we'll multiply by the reciprocal. So we'll multiply by the reciprocal of four-fifths is five-fourths. So we'll have times five-fourths. And notice here, before multiplying though, we can simplify eight and four share a common factor of four. There's one four and four and two fours and eight. And now we multiply, two times five equals 10. And one times one is equal to one. And 10 ones or 10 divided by one is equal to 10. So the quotient eight divided by four fifths is asking how many four fifths there are in eight. And we found there are 10 four fifths in eight. Before we go, let's look at one more example. We want to simplify the expression containing fractions using the order of operations. Notice how we have addition and multiplication, and following the order of operations below, notice how we multiply before we add, which means we'll find this product first, but notice how before multiplying we can simplify. Here we have a common factor of two. There's one, two, and two, and one, two, and two. So when we find this product, we'd have one half plus, our product is going to be three times one, which is three, over one times five, which is five. And now before we find our sum, though, we must obtain a common denominator. The least common denominator would be the least common multiple of two and five, which is 10. So we'll go ahead and rewrite one half with the denominator of 10 by multiplying by five over five. And we'll rewrite three-fifths with the denominator of 10 by multiplying by two over two. So we have five-tenths plus six-tenths, which would be equal to eleven-tenths, which does not simplify, but it is an improper fraction. Let's also convert it to a mixed number. Eleven divided by ten, there's one, ten, and eleven. We subtract, we have a remainder of one. So we can also express eleven-tenths as one and one-tenth. Okay, I hope you found this helpful.